I believe life has two expressions, an internal and an external one. Internally, we are magically made up of a mind-blowing complex strands of molecules of our DNA called the human genome, designed with one purpose and one purpose only, to create the unique you and I. In this amazing cosmic inner universe, everything is magically interrelated and interconnected. Here, the missing links or gaps or incomplete assemblies can lead to disease, to illnesses. And we can see the impairments in the expressions of life in its physical form. The external expression of life is pretty much the same. It sort of starts and kicks off where the other one ends, namely at our birth. Here, our life-living DNA, our experimental DNA, is building as we age and as we grow through life, and it basically represents all the interactions with all the experience that alongside life, we give life and we take back all the lessons. Yes, we have missing links here as well. And usually missing links in our living life DNA are usually experiences and stories we never really learn from. Our experiences and stories that have, or we learned the wrong lessons. We made connections, but we made the wrong connections uh, that left us away, further away, deformed from our core identity. And most often than not, left us fearful, silent, and angry, and confused. At the same time, the missing links in our external life can be valuable lessons and wonderful life-guiding principles that we can learn from if we look back, if we take a moment to look back. They can help us lead wonderfully rich, meaningful, intentional lives. And I think each and every one in this room wants to live a life like that. Uh, my favorite philosopher, Soren Kierkegaard, the Danish philosopher, said something amazing, simple and powerful. Life can only be understood looking backwards, but it must be lived forwards. Allow me today, in the few moments I have, to look backwards on my life and share some life stories with you and perhaps give you three practical points on that have helped me that could be tools for the mind and the heart. The power of perception, the power of perspective, and the power of the poem. It pains me to say and to see around me right now so many young men and women defeated, lost, and confused, ready to throw in the towel. It seems like we're lacking power, perspective, and vision. Yes, there's a lot of pressure on us. I think most of us in this room, if I'm not mistaken, we are the X generations. I think everybody knows the generations, gaps. And basically, we're somehow strangely squeezed in between the millennials, the frailty and the fragility of the millennial generations and the Z generation on one hand, and their ever restlessness and search for meaning, and the baby boomers generation on the other hand, who are regimented, who are strong material, and they are powerful and opinionated. I see and I look around me today, my mates, the people I interact with. And I think it's now more than ever that we feel the pressure and the struggle in our businesses, in our private lives, 
and in our crafts to find our own voice true to our calling. I think we need a new perspective to those more modern ailments. Modern ailments, I mean by the fact that we're losing heart. There is a new type of quitting now. Before it sort of was like, quit, here it is, I go, bye, I quit. Now people don't say that anymore. It's called quiet quitting. It's a slow death. It's a slow apathy. It's a distance from life that leads nowhere but to a slow internal death. I think we need a new perspective. Talking about the power of perspective, now more than ever, a new perspective that is strong enough that it doesn't allow the circumstances to own us, to control us. And as it usually is the case, most of the times the answer is, and you're answering, okay, how do we do it? Where, how? Great. I think that most of the times is, the answer is, is not necessarily outside of us, but is inside of us. The battlefield, remember, is our minds. That's where the war starts, and this is where most of the wars are being lost, in the minds. Yes, the great, famous Roman Stoic philosopher Seneca, it's got a great quote. There are more things likely to frighten us than there are to crush us. We suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Let's use that as a perspective and keep that in mind when we face the next struggle and the next burden. Oh yeah, what is this? Oh, my dog, yeah. Well, yeah, that is to certify that I did have a degree in philosophy. I do have a dog, and I think he did it in my philosophy book. Let me talk about the power perspective. That is a wonderful tool. It's got a practical approach. It's got mind and heart involved into it. Perspective, in my view, is altitude. It has to do with our altitude in life, is our own vantage point, is how we see life. Obviously, the higher we are, the better perspective we have. There's always, on the same terrain, on an identical terrain, an ego, this is a totally different picture than a chicken down low, correct? I love Stephen Furtick's words saying that your perspective will either become your prison or your passport. And then perspective has another ability. It has an ability to zoom in and out. It can also be used backwards and forwards in our lives. That's one of the major advantages. We can look forward in life. We can also look backwards to reinterpret events that have already happened in our past. And that is an essential key. Perspective has the powerful ability to zoom in and out, as I said. And as we do this, not only we change how we look at things, but the very things we look at change. That is a miraculous synergetically work of perspective and perception, because perception, as we all know, has to do with how we view and we relate the world, our own reality. On a personal note, the power of perspective has helped me revitalize and put into focus our entire business, which is in hospitality business. For a while, I thought that our calling was to grow, expand, and give people food, fill their bellies, and, and, and just satisfy a physical human emotion, that of hungriness. I couldn't be further away from the truth. Perspective helped me realize that we are not in the business of filling people's foods in hospitality. We're dealing with emotions. When they come to us, some of them, they are broken and lost and confused. Some have had terrible days. They come as in a hospice. They want their body and their souls to be restored. We are the curators of their hearts because we can make them feel important. We can give them self-worth and a sense of homecoming. And that is a wonderful different perspective than view, viewing your business like in the first place. Do you see the difference? 
Let's talk about the next one, the power of perception. Perception is somehow more powerful, but they both synergetically work together. Sometimes it's one that initiates the second, sometimes the second that initiates the first. Perception truly defines our reality. Is that powerful? It's not what you look at that matters, is what you see in the words of Henry David Thoreau. And that is <laughs> eons of wisdom in that quote alone. And I obviously love you all know this because perception is incredibly powerful because we don't see the world as it is. We see it as we are. That's a nice nin. True gains in life occur when we realize we're missing something. The pandemic gave me ample time for reflection and the pandemic, as although it was like a war for our business, it was like a trench war. It was almost like for the hospitality business and I don't know how it was for you, it was almost like the bomb fell off and the time and the time stopped ticking, we were waiting for the bomb to explode. It was awful. I thought it is the end of all of us. We were filled with anxiety of what it was, what it is, and what it means, and what is to become. We we're all filled with loss. Uh, I allow the pandemic to teach me a different lesson. One of the lessons, it was just by looking and perceiving it, choosing to perceive it differently, that there is so much less than one can be happy with. We don't need all that stuff. Pandemic taught me about standing still. Pandemic taught me the new perception about learning to appreciate and to spend time, quality time with one another. Another power of perception on a personal level was for a while, I thought that my calling, my identity in life is deeply intertwined with my work. And that is a product of who I am, it is my work. And there's true, there's a lot, of, a lot of truth to that, of course. But while sitting still and thinking in the pandemic, I knew it has to be more to life than the here and the now and the this. It has to. Because otherwise it would be a very depressing and incomplete life. So then I thought, I looked at the whole process and then I, and I realized that while I was working on my business, in and on my business, another work, equally important, perhaps even more important, was happening, was happening simultaneously without me realizing. And that was the work on my character, on my being, on my person. That was a transitioning from a Winning business mentality, winning at all costs, to becoming, to becoming a person, a better person. That was the transitioning from acquiring possessions to contributing. That was a mental image that stuck with me of transforming from a lake to a river. I realized that while I was shaping life, life was shaping me. And also I realized that we never really own possessions in life. Possessions ultimately possess us. And this is the last one, the power of the poem. The poem, poetry, is a wonderful, poetry is powerful because it is our core DNA that is not being corrupted. There are no missing links there. I think in the most beautiful expression of our creator, it was like that. It was a poem. Poetry is not about rhythm and rhymes and using it to impress girls or friends at the party. Poetry is our life craft, is what comes from our inner core. Poetry has the power to wake us up from cognitive slumber that most of us, including me many times, I find myself walking into. Poetry 
is so powerful, if you try it, that it unifies our fragmented realities. We are scattered realities all over the place. Today we have one reality, one voice in Facebook, one in TikTok, another one in Instagram, and so on. We have one identity at home, one with our parents, one in private. And that is confusing. Poetry unifies all of those identities into one single voice. It's powerful. It teaches us to be still in a crazy world. Poetry is cathartic for the soul. It is a purging medicine for the modern soul. And poetry embraces the life of the moment in the power of the moment. Poetry is the missing link, perhaps, of today, together with perspective and perception. And that is the realization that man is not the measure of all things. My hope is that humility, empathy, kindness, and openness one day will liberate the possible darkness of a world run and overrun only by data, big data, algorithms, Pressure, pressure projections and behavior modeling. So allow me to sum it all up. I think perspective has to do with our altitude in life, our own vantage point. Perception is how we breathe in the world and poetry is how we breathe the world out. I say let the struggle transform us because it's worth it. The wonderful thing and the vision I want to leave you with is like-minded people are drawn to like-minded people. More like-minded people gather together and they form little islands, islands of sanity, of hope, of genuine care. More islands together form archipelagos. Let's build our own continents. There's no better way to end this and to start our journey than Pablo Neruda's poem, Poetry. And it was at that age, poetry arrived in search of me. I don't know, I don't know where it came from, from a winter or a river. I don't know how or when no, they were not voices. They were not words, nor silence. But from a street I was summoned, from the branches of the night. Abruptly from the others, among violent fires of returning alone. And there I was, without a face, and it touched me. <laughs>